This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 324, Seven Rules for Dietary Domination, by David Ruel with RomanFitnessSystems.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there, with permission from the websites, of course. Now, today's post is from the newest site to join our family here, Roman Fitness Systems. And this one is written by a guest author, Dave Ruel. He's a competitive bodybuilder, professional fitness coach, and nutritionist. So let's jump right in and hear from Dave as we optimize your life. Seven Rules for Dietary Domination by David Ruel with RomanFitnessSystems.com If you thought losing weight and dieting is a difficult process, then you're in luck. I've just made it simple for you with these seven golden rules. If you're not losing the weight and seeing your desired results, let me introduce my seven rules for diet success. One, call it a healthy lifestyle. For most people, the minute they go on a diet, they enter into a restrictive mindset, which creates a situation where the mind will try to find a way to rebel and throw off the proverbial shackles. Stop using the word diet to describe your new lifestyle. If you wanna lose weight, improve your health and get in shape, you need to make a permanent change to your lifestyle and never pull your bad habits back out of the closet. 95% of people usually put the weight back on after following a so-called diet. So make sure you make a sustainable change to your life. Dieting is seasonal and temporary. Make yours a permanent lifestyle. Two, be involved mentally. The next commandment is to get your mind in shape. You need to face the challenge in the right frame of mind focusing yourself on your goals and the stepping stones along the way. Doing so will make your plans more organized and help you to avoid the stress associated with weight loss. Three, keep your goals smart. Your goals should be S, specific, M, measurable, A, attainable, R, realistic, and T, time-bound. See, smart. If you are just after some general weight loss in a vague way, without any particular time scale, then you're heading towards a very non-specific result. You need to set yourself a goal that is specific and can be measured, which is simply your desired weight, fitting a certain clothing size or waist size. Whatever your goal, if it can be measured, then your progress becomes more regulated and you can work out how to reach your target. Keeping a journal will help you in this respect too and allow you to keep track of your march towards the finish line. Four, schedule your meals. There's an old adage which states, quote, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, end quote. I certainly didn't make this up, as everyone knows French Canadians prefer axioms to adages and tend to avoid maxims altogether. But nonetheless, this holds true. Organize yourself and plan your meals in advance. In this way, you will never find a fridge devoid of healthy foods and you will never have to risk that trip to the takeout. Do not cheat your cheat meal. Planning your meals in advance will also allow you to structure your meals and regulate your intake of calories. It is also more than likely that your diet will be well-balanced if you can allocate your quota of each food group in advance. Five, out of sight, out of mind, or at least out of reach. You can't eat if you don't have to eat so keep it out of your cupboards and your fridge. Don't let it into the house and plan your meals to avoid the takeout order. Very, very few people wind up derailing their fat loss effort by eating too much grilled chicken or having an extra serving of veggies. It's the empty calorie foods that are the real killers and must be avoided if at all possible. These add next to nothing in terms of nutritional benefit and fill your blood with sugar. Not ideal if you're trying to lose fat. Of course, this can be a greater challenge if you have family members that aren't supporting you and aren't interested in losing fat and want to snack on those crunchable, munchable, waistline-expanding foods. The key here is to get these people involved. This could be a whole rule unto itself, actually. Ask them to limit purchases of these foods and to do you a favor and hide them from you. Until your cheat day, that is. Six, keep your food diverse. A less common way to lose weight is to vary your nutritional sources. Eating the same foods time after time will cause your body to adapt its anabolic and metabolic needs to suit your nutrition. By varying your food sources, you will avoid this and keep your body burning fat on a more long-term basis. This is another good reason to plan your meals in advance. You already know this principle with regard to training. It's best to keep the body guessing. The same principle applies to your diet. 
the more confusing you make things by not following a specific daily diet of identical foods and nutrients, as well as energy intake, the harder your body has to work to sort of figure out what's going on. And as you know, the harder your body has to work, whether training or nutrition, the faster you're gonna lose fat. And lastly, the final and perhaps most important rule, drum roll please, seven, variety is the spice of life. In keeping with the previous rule, don't eat plain, dull, bland, or boring foods. Whether this means learning how to prepare new healthy meals, or just educating yourself on the proper use of actual spices, hence the title of this tip, variety being the spice of life. Spice it up and this will be repaid with higher motivation. Diet foods aren't renowned for collecting Michelin stars and this hardly surprises those blessed with taste buds. Keep your meals interesting and you'll want to eat your healthy meals again and again. These seven rules are always to be kept in mind if you want to successfully make the switch from the temporary misery mindset to a more fun, fulfilling, and healthy lifestyle. But keep in mind, most people who have been successful develop their own tricks to stay on track. You just listened to the post titled Seven Rules for Dietary Domination by David Ruel with romanfitnesssystems.com. Early in the post, David shared a statistic that most people that go on a diet will essentially regain their weight back if not more. And in fact, that data is accurate. And so I love that he's emphasizing a lifestyle. That's what this is all about, really. How can we keep these habits for life? And like he said, quote unquote healthy or nutritious foods aren't usually the tastiest, but that doesn't have to be the case. Yes, definitely get creative with spices. Many of those are anti-inflammatory and really good for us. But sometimes it just comes down to not eating broccoli, peas, and carrots all the time, but trying something new, something seasonal, for example. You just might like it. And those of you longtime listeners know that I completely agree with writing your goals down and keeping them measurable and time-bound. Those are so, so important, especially when you're just starting out, before it becomes that habit, before it becomes a part of you or your lifestyle. Something that my wife and I try and do is every Sunday, we plan what we're gonna eat for the rest of the week. Because she and I both know when we get home after a long day's work, the last thing we're gonna wanna think about is what we're gonna eat. But on the weekend, when we have energy and we can be a little bit more creative and we have time to go grocery shopping, that's when we'll plan our meals for the week. And that helps ensure that pretty much every night our meals are balanced and well thought out. Then on Saturday or Sunday, we go grocery shopping for the entire week We stock our fridge and our pantry with those foods that we know we're gonna cook this week. We put them in plain sight so that they're fresh in our minds and then we have a plan. That helps us stay away from going, oh, maybe we'll just order a pizza tonight or we'll stop by the drive-thru on the way home. Now, the one suggestion I do have that's a little bit different than what David mentioned with regards to keeping your food diverse, what we've actually found is for those starting out, it can be helpful to kind of eat the same foods day after day just to keep you on track initially. But once you start losing that weight, it becomes a lifestyle, you're getting used to planning your meals, exercising and all that good stuff, then start to incorporate more diversity. This is because what we're finding is thinking about new and creative ways to cook, especially right in the very beginning, can be a little bit overwhelming because you're also maybe going to a brand new gym or trying a new workout and you're trying to get your mindset right. And so just having to think about a new recipe every day may be a little overwhelming. So for me and my wife, it's okay. We've been doing this a while. It's not overwhelming to plan a week in advance. But for some folks, it may be too challenging at this time. So don't feel too badly if in the beginning, you need to eat kind of the same foods every day. But once it becomes comfortable, you can start slowly adding variety back into your diet. Now, before I go, I wanted to remind you that if you wanna meet some like-minded people and participate in bonus book giveaways and a lot more, join our Facebook group. You can search for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts in Facebook to find it and request access, or the shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. All right, that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow for our usual Friday Q&A. So definitely come back for that where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show 
and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember your optimal life awaits.